Hell Canada get live. What's going on, see all been Audley Stevenson, my man Carlin Gay next to me, NBL Canada Live is in the house. We are on site for the 2014 NBL Canada Draft Combine. Over the course of the next two days, players will have an opportunity to show their wares, put their talents on display in front of coaches, GMs, with hopes of landing an NBL Canada contract. That's the main thing here, Odd Man. Uh, you talk about a ton of players with one goal and one dream, but they're all competing for very limited spots. Uh, a lot of head coaches in there, eight of them to be exact. Uh, a couple new ones who hopefully will get an opportunity to talk to and pick their brains to find out exactly what they're looking for to put on a squad. Yeah, and, and this is a time where you do that. You put what you, you what you want on display. And for these coaches, they've got a lot to choose from. You know, we talk often about the basketball explosion happening in Canada. We see it on the NBA level with right. Andrew Wiggins and Anthony Bennett and now we're seeing the explosion happening a bit closer to home and why not get excited yeah you mentioned the top two last number one overall picks uh, Andrew Wiggins Anthony Bennett we had our very own number one pick overall that was Canadian for the first time ever a year ago Alex Superman Johnson maybe they make it back to back maybe Canada makes it back to back in their own domestic league we also have the first Canadian head coach here in Canada as well uh, well, well not the first I should say but uh, one what the only that is currently a head coach of a former Sabah, player a former player the first guy that's yes. what I meant the first guy to play <laughs> in the league and now coach as well and he's also Canadian and Kyle Julius and uh, he's coming in with a uh, with with a lot of expectations and as are most of the new coaches absolutely and, and, and when you look when you talk about what this league does uh, immediately the competitive level of, yeah. of this league is on another level uh, and guys are in the, we'll, we'll see guys in the gym and they're they're bringing it all out because they know that this is their time to shine this is their opportunity so we're gonna stop talking we're gonna take you inside the gym to give Start you a chance yeah well we just do what we do naturally I guess okay. there's a chance to see some of the sights and sounds of NBL Canada's 2014 draft combine Stevenson, NBL Canada Live, Carl and Gay with me, and we have the pleasure to be joined by Carlos Knox, head coach of the Love and Lightning. How's it going, coach? I'm doing great. How are you? Hey, we're, we're good. I mean, you know, glad to have you up here. We're here for the NBL Canada Draft Combine. Uh, this is a great time of year because we're just kind of getting started in the league and a good sort of time for you to jump in as well, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, obviously, we want to take a look at some of the best players in Canada, um, as well as bring some guys over from the USA. So it's a pretty exciting moment. In terms of this kind of setting, what do you guys really look at uh, in, in when you get a bunch of players in the gym, really a melting pot of players from all over the country? What do you kind of look for in players uh, when you're looking to select to play for London Lightning? Well, I just think it's very important for guys to understand when you come to a camp like this, uh, you want to make sure that you show that you have the basic necessities to play basketball. Sometimes it can get into a rat race up and down the floor. So you want to just make sure that you distinguish yourself and make sure that you're, you're, you're on top of your game from a fundamental standpoint. And uh, I think a lot of guys don't really understand that. But we try to make sure that when we pull them to the side, we kind of talk to them about that. And uh, I think that's something that's very positive for their f future and career. I think, that, you know, one good thing, you sort of touched on doing what you do almost. Like if there's a certain thing that you're really well at, you just stick to that and you do that. And don't try to work out of that box. But you got to admit, when you're in this kind of realm and guys are going back and forth, you kind of get, well, you, you, there's a temptation to want to, you know, do a bit more, isn't it? Absolutely. Because, I mean, obviously you're looking for a spot. You're trying to get a, get a spot in this league. So a lot of the guys that come in, you know, they have no choice but to go for their own. But, again, when you have um, evaluators and guys that really know the game, like our coach, staff and you know some of the Canadian coaches as well as GMs you know you want to make sure that you're doing the right thing as far as being a professional and um, it, it's very easy to determine who's a professional and who's an amateur uh, my goal it will be very clear from the beginning uh, and I need to talk with the players um, build a good team put a good mentality uh, make them work 
and it's clear that uh, we always can find a lot of talent, but uh, we have to find the talent to deliver that talent to the to the team, and this is very difficult to find, uh, and this is uh, why it is very important this draft today. You know? <laughs> We're joined by Julian King of the St. John Miller Rats, brand new head coach. How does it feel to be here? Uh, we're at the draft now, kind of getting things in order. And, you know, you're scout looking for potential nuggets for your squad. What's got to feel to be in this situation? Well, yeah, it's very exciting to get a chance to coach on the pro level. But, you know, as you just said, we're at the combine now, so it's time to work. So now, you know, the excitement is wearing off, and now the grind is beginning to take effect. The combine atmosphere is always exciting because you've got players that are out here trying to put on their best. Put on, a, put on a show, really. What would you, uh, a, a young player coming here, what kind of advice would you give them an approach to how do you, how do you address it during the combine? It just comes down to do what you do. Don't, don't try to force it. It becomes really obvious. If you're a shooter, as soon as you shoot that thing, we can tell if you're a shooter or not. If you're a slasher, if you're a rebounder, defender, just, just be you. That, that'd be my best advice. Just let the flow happen. There's a lot of kids here, and there's a lot of talent, but there's also a lot of projects. And as uh, as a coach yourself, uh, I'm sure you're into the developmental stage of uh, of helping players advance in their career as well. So, uh, how much of a project do you guys are you willing to take on in a situation like this in a draft like this? It's tough for those types of players in this league because of the the high player turnover that this league will kind of see. Uh, owners want to win right away, and it's tough to do that with project players. So, for for guys like that coming into a combine and showing it. it they would really need to, to show some, uh, should I say, some real potential uh, for us to take a chance on project players, but uh, it doesn't mean that it can't happen. It's, you know, the, the window to get this right is so small from your perspective because, you know, you, you, you have to be able to assess uh, attitude and character, talent, you know, uh, the cohesiveness with other teammates in a very short window of time. Uh, is there a particular area that you focus on as a coach first, or what's your approach? I always like to look at the nonverbal. What are they doing when they don't have the ball? What, how do they react when a teammate messes up? That kind of stuff. Um, that tells me a lot about their character. What happens when it's a nice play? Are they on the bench celebrating that nice play? Uh, and that's how I measure the character of a player. Uh, and also their behavior when they're not playing, when they're watching the other games. What are, uh, you know, if something happens where uh, it's misfortune on a player, are they there laughing? That shows a lot. That tells me a lot. So, uh, yeah. By uh, the head coach, the Bradford David Magley. We're up here in your hometown, home base, uh, in Axe Institute, uh, where the uh, dra NBL Canada draft combine is happening. Lots of talent in the gym today. Oh, yeah, it's great. It, it's, it's, it's exciting because there's a lot of good Canadian talent. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, it's fun to watch young people giving it all, and it's just, it's a good environment. The combine atmosphere for these players, it, it can be so, uh, it's pressure filled for sure, because you gotta come in here, you gotta produce, you know, you wanna hit all your shots, you wanna make all your passes, you wanna make the right plays. Uh, but is, is there a way you over you can overthink things, trying to be that perfect player? Oh, ab absolutely. I mean, what you need to do is you need to do what you do. You shoot it, shoot it. If you rebound it, rebound it. If you block shots, block shots. If you don't do any of those things, save your money. I mean, at some point, you got to recognize that there's this is professional basketball. This is not minor league basketball. This is a Canada's professional basketball league, just like they have in Italy and Spain and France and everywhere else in the world. This is pro basketball, and we're looking for real pros. There's all circumstances, and it's individual. Uh, if the kid's a really big athlete and he's really skilled, and he just needs to gain some weight. If he's a kid that, that's, that's not as skilled, but he's incredibly athletic and he needs to get more skilled. Or if the kid has a potential as a human being that's not being fulfilled yet, we really look at that and go, wow, we can set him on the right path. And he one day becomes a husband and a father and he pays his bills. He may never, we never, may never play in the NBA. We may never bring that kind of light, but we'll know we did something great. And that's really the, the kind of focus we're trying to be if we really are a family organization like we say that we are. Congratulations once again on a great season last year. Uh, we're looking ahead, obviously. You know, you can have you know, all the fun you want looking in the past, but you got to look ahead, and this draft combine is about that. That's what we're here for. Now that our, 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 the upcoming season starts now, when you have the draft combine coming to try to find some players that's able to help you out for next season. So I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to probably get this season kick-started or uh, try to put the last year behind us and go out and try to do the same thing over again. If there is a downside to winning is when you come to the drafting process, uh, you don't get any of those earlier picks. And uh, in the Windsor Express case, you're going to 16 
that's you know, overall 16th pick and the 24th overall. So you're not going to get the cream of the crop, per se, uh, but there's still there's some opportunity to, to find that hidden gem and that nugget no one else has maybe valued the same way. By the way, this is your spot where if you want to break the trading news or any type of news like that, this, this would be it. <laughs> I've been fortunate to be able to get a different role this year as the director of the basketball operation. So we'll be in talks to some of these guys to potentially move up if we see somebody we like. But you know what? I think at 16 or 24, we'll be able to get a good player. In the second round, we were able to get Kevin Lazale um, and Wayne Portolini to play for us a little bit. So I think it's good players here. So over 100. And 50, close to 200 players here. So we'll be able to get some good talent and, and uh, hopefully to be able to help us uh, make our team and to be able to compete in this league. I, as a pro player myself, I tried to climb the ladder. You know, I got cut from the national team five times before I finally made it. You know, so as a pro player, it's actually easier to get these guys to the next level because their weaknesses and their issues, they're really easy to pinpoint. When you're working with high school players and university players, it's not as easy. It's a little bit more challenging because you can't really see, they haven't really fully developed mentally, physically. But with pros, you know, there's a lot, there's money involved. And it's easy. Say, hey, if you don't fix this, you're not gonna get to the next level. If you don't fix that, you're not gonna go to, the, you're good at this, but we gotta work on these things, you know? And when you're watching tape, and breaking things down for me it becomes a little bit more easy a little bit you know a little bit more clear and so you put that into a team setting it becomes now difficult so making you better as a player is easy but now making the team better that's where you're, you're challenged i'm smart enough to know that i need help i've got a really good staff uh guys that have been around the game for a long time you know guys that have been to every you know every level guys working in the nba and things like that so i'm going to use that staff you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of copy the success that came before me and really try and build on that. In a setting like this, where you have a, a kind of a, a buffet of players, projects, some guys that may play in this league, may not play in this league. How do you evaluate the talent in such a short period of time? It's tough because I have my wish list of guys already. Not a lot of them are here. I know guys that I want. I have relationships with guys that we've worked out in Americans and Canadians, even some Europeans I've talked to. Right, so. From this, we'll see what happens out here. Uh, we'll see how they fit into that scheme. You gotta kind of compare, you gotta you put some numbers together. I watched a lot of film in the last couple days on different guys, so we'll see what happens. We've been excited to get out here this weekend and find some new talent, and uh, we're really looking forward to October coming around here. We talk about talent, and we're, we're in a gym where a lot of ballers are here, a lot of guys are showing their best. As a coach, what do you look for first immediately? I, to me, I still think it's athleticism. You know, do these guys have the athleticism that it takes to compete in our league? Uh, it's a big league. It's an athletic league. Uh, I think you have to have that to, to start with. You know, and if they have the athleticism and we're interested in their game a little bit, they've done some things, we'll, we'll start researching them a little bit. You know, where have they played? Have they played at a level that's, you know, equivalent to most of the guys in our league? And, and so on and so on. I think, obviously, every team that comes here, they have to understand what are they looking for this weekend. You know, we're looking for potentially another five. We're looking for another Canadian right now. Uh, I mean, if you don't come in with that type of mindset, you can really kind of get lost with 100 plus players here. So, um, you know, so it's exciting. That's how we, you scream ball. That's how we, ball. that's how we. Ball.